Great, we should be live. Hopefully so. I'll just come round to the bench. Uh, hello, everyone again. Um, yeah, our weekly live stream. We managed to get ourselves sorted out a bit more quickly. So we've actually managed to start on Sunday morning as promised. Because so far we've had a few uh, disasters, a few, what would you call them, technical issues. And we've ended up starting um, on Sunday afternoon when the intention is to start on Sunday morning. Right, now the idea of today's live stream, as you may gather, is to help out anybody who's starting. Before I, I get into it, actually, um, you may hear some background noise. That's basically, uh, there's a bit of work going on next door, or, well, part next door, part here, because um, the tree surgeon, he's working on uh, bringing the trees down. And if you're wondering why we're having to bring them down, it's because here in Wales, we've been, and across the UK, we've been badly affected by ash dieback. Uh, so uh, he's having to bring all of those trees down because unfortunately they're all slowly dying. So for safety reasons, the ash trees around us, they're gonna have to be felled. So uh, yeah, he's, he's in the process of doing that. Now getting back to the live stream, so I'm telling you that just in case there's, there's background noise and it, it might be a little bit irritating, but I thought it's just as well to do the live stream um, but if you do hear any noises, that's basically what it is. Uh, back to today's live stream then. As you can see, I'm just starting to work on a simple love spoon. And that's where we're going to focus our attention, is on simple little love spoons. And basically, we're looking at how the love spoon can be a really good medium, a really good method for anyone who's interested in, in having a go at wood, uh, wood carving woodworking it's just to highlight how you can use the love spoon uh to sort of get in, involved in in that process to how can we explain yeah to begin your journey then let's put it that way into wood carving so a lot of the basic principles of making love spoons are the basic principles of wood carving so what i've done here i've got a number of simple spoons and I'm going to demonstrate I'm just working on the bowl of this one I'm going to demonstrate some of the simple principles for carving and for carving uh, wood carving in general so the first things as we always state we are marking out our grain with a vertical uh, a vertical grain especially for a love spoon like this because we've got this delicate twist on the stem and it would be really easy to break that stem uh, if it was a, a diagonal grain or a horizontal grain you need that strength in the wood and you get that from having a vertical grain so what we're going to do we're just going to demonstrate how we would carve this one uh, this is a popular little design the wood that we're working in is a piece of oak you can see I'm doing our stock cuts at the top and forming the top of the hat. Um, and yeah, it's a popular one. I'm trying to think what name we give this. It's either Micorathon or Carino. Um, and it's available, yeah, it's available through our website. Uh, Micorathon is Spanish for my heart and Carino is roughly translating as a sweetheart. So that's the... Uh, the name that we've given this particular design but a simple little love spoon and a nice project then for anyone getting started the twist on the stem is a little bit more of an advanced skill but the basics of carving out this love spoon yeah you can see we just do those basic principles of stop cuts we then use that stop cut as a barrier just like so cutting into that edge the gouges that we're working with, as always, they are our vintage Addis gouges and vintage Herring Brothers gouges, as well as these ones here, which I do believe were made by Marples. So we're just doing that little bit of detail into the edges, just like so. And 
you can see it's a it's a simple simple little design you just need those simple stop cuts and then using them as a barrier to work into just like so there we are right now the next little bit and this is to do with our own carving style then i like to bevel the edges so i just raise it a little bit in the vise and we just bevel the edges just a little bit just to shape it around just like so but this is ideal for anybody who is interested in learning wood carving the reason it's ideal is because it's a simple process and it teaches you those fundamental skills that you're going to need to learn if you're going to develop your wood carving skills something i emphasize a lot then as well you need good sharp tools good quality steel that makes the job a lot easier and if you've got good sharp tools you've got good quality tools as well ultimately that might be the difference between you continuing with wood carving succeeding with wood carving and potentially not so it's worth yeah it's worth looking at investing we do quite a few few uh, quite a few videos sorry quite a few videos on uh tools that sort of area because it is such an important field to understand and it is such an important part of wood carving sharpening system then that we use is a tall neck which is a good piece of kit for using and that really does bring the gouges up to a good finish very interesting it's something that we have to do another video on because i've seen some stuff on you know how ultimately or oh, sharpening you know it's ultimately using sorry i'll just show you what we've done there before we get rid of it um yeah it's just basically rocks and things like this yeah it, it's the same old thing when it comes to tools when it comes to sharpening there are tools and there are tools you know you can't just dismiss different sharpening systems we've used oil stones we've used wet stones things like that and we use the tormek there is no comparison the tormek is a far far superior system for using right now another simple little carving just to demonstrate because this is all about teaching some basic sort of fundamental skills this one here we're going to carve is just a simple little flower so the way we do that you just mark out your center just like so the way we mark it out we angle the gouge sort of open like that so we can see where we're marking it and then we angle it right across just like so the reason that you do that is if you angle it in like that you're going to cut out what you're you're actually carving so that is why we angle it right across and then you tap it on the top just like so you do the same because we're marking out our center so you measure it so you can see angle a gouge over one two three just some taps on the top that marks the stop cuts for the center of our carving now we're going to work around our center and this is the carving for anyone who's interested in learning carving this is the carving that i've always used to teach i'm carving this one in a piece of fruit wood by the look of it i will have a double check it's either apple or cherry my instinct is is telling me that it's a piece of cherry and then what we do we work around that center same again mark it out so you can see angle the gouge over and do your stop cuts same again for the other side mark it out you may notice that i don't actually measure it out like this it's, it's basically i don't need to because i've done it so many times but for the purpose of the demonstration because this is all about teaching yourselves how to do these things angle the gouge so everybody so you can see where you're cutting angle it right over three taps on the top and we've got our stop cut same again measure it out angle it over three taps on the top you have to excuse the noise and we've got the top of our petal same again we're just angling it so we can see measure just like so and i've given away by saying petal i've given away the carving that i'm doing it's one that we demonstrate regularly angle it over it's a simple five petal flower 
Nice thing with the love spoon, of course, is that you can give symbols, you can give them meanings. So with a, a flower, one idea is you, you, will, you hope that love will blossom or you hope that love will continue to blossom. So that's the nice thing with love spoon. Anything that you do, anything you make, you can give it more meaning. Another part of the tradition then as well, if you're new to it, if it's unfamiliar, the love spoon tradition, it is open to interpretation. So when we give a meaning to something, you are free to interpret it in a different way. Now then, back to the carving, because that's our focus. What we're doing, we're just carving into the edges of the petals. Here we are, I'm assuming that Thomas the Woodcarver's just walked in. You could, can you hear me okay? Yeah, oh, it's fine. coming, coming yeah. through on the stream? Yeah, yeah, the boss has arrived. The boss has arrived to check. Um, yeah, so you can see we're using we're using the stop cuts. Um, everybody is is probably anticipating today. They're all anticipating you singing again, so um, that's going to be the highlight of the live stream. So you can see we're using those stop cuts just to cut into the edge, just cutting into those stop cuts. So you cut in and then you pull back. Same again, higher up. You cut into that stop cut and pull back. Same over this side. Just like so. Thomas Woodcarver standing over me checking. And then we're just cutting into the centre. So a little bit of detail into the middle, but in that petal. Any thoughts? I, I was looking at the wood and I was I was suggesting to everyone that it's it's fruit wood. It's either cherry or apple. And I've I've gone for cherry myself. But uh, we get a second opinion. It's got that sort of... Um, it's got those colours, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of a purpley look in there. Yeah, I, I saw something actually on you know, Reddit and somebody who was learning, they were, they were asking about that. Um, they were asking how do we identify different woods and it's just experience and time with working with it where you get used to identifying sort of features. Um, we, we were carving a little piece of oak, that was the first one, I'll bring that back into shot. With the oak, you get the medullary ray, so it's these, these lines in it and things like that. You also get the silver fish. There's features in the wood, so you identify it. With cherry, you can get sort of um, a variety of colours, can't you? You get like a pink, a, a reddy sort of colour, a blue, a bluey sort of green colour in it as well. So that's how we identify the woods, yep, is by looking at the... It does help if you cut um, the tree down yourself as well, doesn't it? It does help if you cut the tree down, so you know. But it, it's quite often we have woods... And the thing is, is that we don't you know we don't know them all because um, we have wood brought in from local tree surgeons and things like that. And um, sometimes we're scratching our heads as to what it what it actually is. So you can see we're just basically finishing off our simple carving. So what you've got, I'm going to ask Dad actually a, a favour. Do you want to? Um, I'm just thinking with some of these carvings now, it might be worth just putting a coat of shellac on. Because that will bring up the character and the colour in the grain. So I'm thinking if we if we put a coat of shellac on, that that might just yeah everybody can see that colour coming out in the wood there. But that's just a simple little flower. What I then do from here, we use the reverse angle. We use the reverse angle of the gouge just to cut into the centre, just to finish it nicely. But it's a simple little carving, and it's it's effective, and it very much um, yeah it's it's a good way to learn because there's all the principles. It's where I started. There we are. Well, Dad started on yeah. the same thing, and it's it's exactly the same for myself. Then I learned to carve carving key rings, and I would decorate simple little key rings. And in terms of getting started. Um, because that's the thing, everybody has to start somewhere. I, I learned to carve key rings because it was it's a process of building up your confidence. And I wasn't confident enough to start on um, a love spoon because I didn't want to spoil a larger piece of wood. So by using key rings, by making simple little key rings, I could build my confidence up in my carving um, without sort of being worried, I was using offcuts. So if I spoiled one, it, it didn't really matter. And you Here we hit, are. You hit it on the nail. It's all the, it is about confidence, building yeah. up your confidence. Right. Now the next little carving, let's have a little look. Another one, we're here in Wales. So of course a popular symbol 
of Wales. If you want to just, I'm going to hand these two to Dad. He's going to put a little shellac on there for us to bring up the colour of the wood. Yeah, we're here in Wales. So, of course, a popular symbol here in Wales. I demonstrate a little bit of chip carving at the top. Uh, but a popular symbol in Wales, of course, is the daffodil. Again, you've got that idea that love will blossom. It's also golden in colour, so we've done daffodils on spoons for golden wedding anniversaries. Can I annoy you now? What's that? Oh, yeah. I just want to show you shellac. Here we are. Brush. Here we are. So you've got to get it in. You've got to get it in shot. So that's the that's the shellac that he's showing there. There we are. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we carve it quite often. It's it's golden in colour and yeah, it's got a of course the the, the links with Wales. So the way that we carve a daffodil, and the interesting thing as well, with this one, I always say that I actually prefer when Dad, when he carves a daffodil, to, to the way I do it myself. But we, we just do simple stop cuts again. So just cutting, just like so. Can I, like, before you go, right? Back. There we are. So you can see how the, this yeah, is, you're in this shot. Is, this is the best bit. This you can see you, you've got to be really skilled to do this. There we are. So you can see you, you're, you basically, when you're applying shellac, we're going with the grain. We soak the brush in methylated spirits. Oh, what so, a job. There we are. Very nice. Why drip it on your leg? Sorry. I don't mind dripping on my leg. Just don't kick the tripod. And, oh, and sorry. You've got the, uh, there right you are. And the back. He's good on. He's he's very good on. He's very good on the on the the wood side of it, but the technical side of it is is still a bit of a, a mystery. Look at look at that, Dave. Isn't that there beautiful? We are. Very nice. Yeah. Right. We get back to this demonstration now. Um, yeah. So you can see we we start off with the stop cut. So that's going to be the front of our daffodil. Then we've got to think about the trumpet. So that's what we're doing is the trumpet on the daffodil, and we just do then the back of the trumpet, okay? And we've got to do our petals. So working on the back, we do one going straight back, and then the way I do it, I do one above, and then I do one below. So again, you're marking out all of the stop cuts. You mark out those stop cuts first of all, and that then, they all act as barriers, just like so. So we've marked out all of the stop cuts just into the edge like so. There we are. And that gives us, there, we're going to do that stem on the daffodil. So we've got the petals, we've got the trumpet that we start with, then we do the petals, then we do the stem. doesn't matter the order, but that's the way that we sort of um, find it easiest and that suits us to, to do it in that style. The other thing as well with the, the trumpet, you're trying to create that, uh, it's, it's, a lot of this is to try and create a three-dimensional feel whilst you're working in two dimensions. So we just put a little bit of detail on like so. I'm gonna go around the edges of our petals. I've got daddy's waiting in the wings to show you how the other carving has come up. It's, it's almost dry now. It's almost dry. I think that's a hint that I gotta go a bit faster. No, um, don't rush, no, that's an important thing. Carving, you cannot rush it. You have to take your time. Here we are, speaking into... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm, I, I tell you what, direction. the reason I'm pointing for him for the microphone is because um, we're waiting for those song requests. He's been waiting all week for this. He's been practicing his singing all week. Well, you, you, but you told me I had to have a license to sing. So, oh, right. So I, I've been a bit nervous ever since. Okie dokie. You've got to sing. I, I told him it, it has to be when I was listening to Bob license, Marley last night. License free and royalty yeah, free. And, and he was singing, don't worry. No problem. Don't no, worry. Something I, like I, thought it, I think he was singing, don't worry about a thing. Ah, that's right. Don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing... Gonna be all right. There we are. Well, by next week, maybe Thomas Woodcarver will have learnt the words. Right, so you can see what we've done. We've done the petals. We're going to leave the trumpet raised. <coughs> um, so we're going to leave that trumpet raised. The actual front of the trumpet, the back of the trumpet, 
What we're doing, we're trying to create levels. So what I mean by that, the front of the trumpet, I want that raised, so brought out in the carving. The back of the trumpet, then, these petals have been pushed back. And then the back of the trumpet, we want that as like the joining piece between the raised front of the trumpet and the petals that have been pushed back. So it just creates that impression of depth. Have you mentioned what wood you're working on? Well, this one, we're not so sure. Um, I haven't mentioned that one. What does that look like? That's why, uh, that's why I was thinking, you know. It, uh... We could have avoided that, see if you hadn't said anything, and just, I, just I, pretended I, that we had, we'd forgotten. But now you said it, we've got to answer. People want to know, you see. Um, I would suggest, I've got a thought in mind, especially after carving it. So I'll let you go, I'll let you go first on this one. Well, What's your thought? It's strange, because it actually, the top part looked like a piece of oak. Okay, well, I think you're in the right ballpark, but I don't think it's oak. But is it chestnut? I think it's chestnut, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chestnut. Yeah, I think that's a piece of chestnut, especially yeah. from the way it's carved. An, an interesting thing. An interesting thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, chestnut, it's easy. There's certain types of chestnut that are easy, um, and this even happens to ourselves. We start carving it, and we're thinking, oh, this is a beautiful piece of oak, and then you realise as can you I, go before through... You, before you start that, yeah. can, I, can I just highlight something with the one you've done? Okay. Okay, for people, because yeah. um, I think... The, this this look yeah. was either a Friday afternoon job. It's a, it's a little bit rushed because when I put the shellac on, look. Yeah. Okay. Can you see? There's a bit of a chisel mark there, and you haven't quite rounded it there. So you know, there's a little bit of work left on on this one. There we are. All right. So, so there's. But the nice thing is because you're doing hand carving, you you basically you can spend as much time as you want finishing and things like that as you want to so we can go back over it you can change it you can adapt things as you go um, so, so you can find an excuse for not doing it properly yeah you completely thrown me now because i was explaining something and i can't remember now what what i was oh, don't, don't, don't worry what was what was i explaining don't worry it's there fine. We are. right i'm gonna go on to this one here um Right, so this one, again, this is a, a simple little <coughs> carving that we do, different to the other two last demonstrations that we've done. We're carving a piece of mahogany, so reclaimed wood, recycled wood. Um, yeah, and it's basically starting off again with our stop cuts. So we do our stop cuts down into the woods. And then after, we will do our detail. So what we've got, we've got a heart in the centre, basically. Interestingly, this will be a, a useful demonstration, this one, I hope, because it is a slightly more difficult piece of wood. And this is what you find. Some woods, it's just basically, when we've marked it out, you have to try and get the best out of it possible. Now, straight away, I can feel that I'm getting resistance there. And it's chewing a little bit. It's not carving nicely. So I've clocked it quite nicely for you all to see. That's a bit of experience where straight away I knew that was going to be difficult. So what I'm going to actually do, I'm going to do something completely different. And this, for anybody, this might be a useful demonstration. Possibly not for absolute beginners. This is a difficult piece of wood for somebody just starting out. But for anybody who's done a bit of carving and finds sometimes that they encounter a difficult piece of wood, this will be a good demonstration because you can see here, the, the wood, I'm working with it. The wood is happy on this side. When I carve that way, that's a happy piece of wood. It's saying, yeah, that's the right direction to go. Now, normally I would carve up here and it would carve Fine, and we're just about getting away with it, but it's not, it's not quite as happy when I'm carving it there. And here, where we've carved down the bottom, that's not a happy piece of wood in terms of me carving it in that direction. However, if I come back this way, which is completely against anything you would read in the manual, because a manual would tell you 
that I'm working in the wrong direction. But for this piece of wood, it's happier. You get this, and this, is, this isn't an uncommon thing in this type of mahogany. That piece of wood, when I was carving the other way, I was getting a lot more resistance than I am as I carve this way. I'm going to come back around here to tidy it up. And that's a good example. It is an excellent example. For how you cannot, you can't have like a set fixed idea in your head. Sometimes the wood will there tell again. you something. What's this say? It's there again. Look. You yeah, it is. It. Yeah. Sometimes a piece of wood, so I'm delighted to be honest with you that I picked up this piece of wood because I wanted to demonstrate this on our YouTube channel for a while. And typical, you know, live is, is live. I picked it up in a live demonstration. But what you've got, that wood is not happy because wood, it is a, it's a living thing. And if you work with it, you'll get better results than if you fight against it. And if you've got it in your head that the normal thing to do is to carve up that way because you're reading the grain and that's what the grain will tell you, you're going to have problems. So what we do, we just cut into the edge like so to re get our barrier but then I'm going to turn it round in the vise and I'm going to do what the wood is telling me as opposed to what a wood carving manual or teacher or instructional guide would tell you to do. I'm going to go that way there. But the basic thing with it, it's the results that you get. That is the most important thing. And if I go and carve the other way, I'm not going to get the result. And it's going to be the same now. When I bevel the edge of this heart, again, I might have to do this at some point. No, that's, that's carved nicely all down the edge. And this is where learning wood carving, a lot of the time you are reading the grain. You are trying to understand what the piece of wood is telling you. So I'm going to come down this way. But as I said, if I find at some stage that the wood wants me to go in a different direction, you have to be open to doing what the wood has told me. So basically, to sum up that one, yeah, when I tried to carve up here, the wood has told me, no, I'm not happy with you doing that. I want, I want you to go this way here. And I've got a cleaner finish because I've listened to the wood. A lot of that comes down to experience. There's, there's no sort of substitute for experience. And you, you have to, that is the process of learning carving, is learning to read the grain and being open to changing your plan based on what the wood is telling you. So again, we're just working into that edge. It's, it's fine here. It's carving quite nicely there. So again, we go into that edge. The wood, it's basically the wood is happy. It's not telling me, no, I'm not happy with that. And then just to finish off. And this is the key thing. It is ultimately the end result. The story of carving this spoon, where I have had to change what I'm doing to suit what the wood wants me to do. Once it's finished, nobody knows that that was the story of this love spoon. But... The most important thing is that you can get that final result that your efforts deserve. So finishing off here, again, we're getting a little bit of resistance. Can I, can I come in there, there as well? Because yeah, did you have something you, to say? Yeah, you've got a piece of, you're, you're working on a piece of mahogany there, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, this is the one um, you did earlier. If I can just very put that in shot. quickly put that there. Can you see that the colours now, especially in the bowl of the spoon? And on the side right. of the spoon, you've got right. some lovely colours coming that, up there. I think that was the, we decided that was the cherry. Yeah, pretty sure right. that's a piece of cherry. Um, the other one we thought was chestnut. Yeah. And this one we know is definitely oak. Yeah. And the interesting thing there, you've got, you've got one, two, three, four pieces of wood there, which is interesting really because these are commercial items for us. Yeah. And most of the commercial items that you see Welsh love spoons on sale um, in retail outlets, they tend to be one wood. What, either one or maybe two yeah. different shades. You get a lot of lime that's stained. Be, and they tend to be one wood, and they'll either do a stain 
an, well, quite often they'll do a stained finish to a dark finish and a light finish. Um, but this is the beauty for anybody interested in learning wood carving and love spoon carving. As you can see, you can use all sorts of different timbers. Just these four love spoons that we've done, we've got, as Dad said, oak, mahogany, chestnut, and cherry. And that's the one of the most fascinating parts is working with the different ones. Um, as we said, that is something that we were demonstrating. That's something that happens in mahogany. Um, and you, you, you've just got to learn to deal with it. But hopefully that might be useful seeing how we deal with that. It shows how you have to be open-minded and try different things to, to overcome um, that, that particular problem. Right, And, and sometimes as well, the, the colour and the character of a particular piece of wood, for instance, the mahogany, which I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little coat on this one, Dave. Yeah, that's um, fine. Just to, just to show the, the, the colour of this particular... I mean, look at that colour there now. So it's... Um, I know it sounds bad, but it's, it's taking your eye now away from... I mean, we haven't even carved that smooth in there yet. No. But the colour of that wood... And also, over, the, over time, the, the colour will change. And this is another thing that is worth knowing for anybody who's learning wood carving, anybody who's interested in it. Um, there's a lot that one of the most common questions you'll see asked on forums and in all sorts of different areas when it comes to wood carving. A lot of people will ask, what wood should I start with? And the answer that automatically comes back straight away is oh, um, lime is the best wood for beginners. And it is true, lime, basswood, the Americans call it, it, it is easy carving wood. Um, it's not, it's, it, it is, it's, it's a sympathetic wood to carve and things like that. However, what that is saying there, where the other woods, where you've got that character in the wood, that character in the grain, they can distract from a multitude of sins. So what I mean by that is that you can get away with a little bit more in, say, a piece of you, like I'm carving here now. You, you will get away with certain things in this wood because the eye is distracted by it. So what, we're not saying you don't, you know, focus on improving your wood carving skills and try and concentrate on carving nicely and, and really carving well. What we're saying is that by being open to using different woods, the wood can sometimes compensate for a few deficiencies in your carving. I think Dad wants to come back in with another... Yeah, because um, here I, I've got two pieces of oak, one which is relatively new and it's been cut down um, within the last sort of five years, and... Um, the one other one, several hundred years old, isn't is it? It could be, oh, maybe it came from a, a, a local church, and um, it again is oak, but you see the difference. Um, it, it's at least 200 years old, and what probably, if I can just push these in the camera, yeah, just put them in the that's the shot there. Um, oak that was perhaps cut down the last five years and dried. Whereas the oak that is probably so talking. 200 yeah, years one, old, the difference in colour, which is incredible. So that as, as the wood um, gets ages, uh, ages then it, you can see how the change in colour. Um, and, and that's another sort of really interesting thing because our love spoons, again, age. I've got one that I will show you, Dave, in a minute. But you can see how it's already aging. Um, and that's what you find is that, yeah, it does. It changes the wood. But that's the nice thing. With wood carving, you are opening yourself up to an entirely new world, not just of wood carving, but also to learn about the wood, to learn. It's, it's a really... It's an absorbing subject. Daz has brought in, yeah, a, a lovely oh, spoon. You can see that one there. Again, that's oak. And that's when I got this, changing. It, had been, it was an old oak beam from a shop in Tenby. 
So that had been in situ for at least a hundred years. And then, of course, um, you can see where we carved out the spoon. And I'm going to push it back in focus, Dave. Yeah. You can see where the spoon is slightly lighter because I carved in. But the outside, again, because it's been exposed to the air, it's much darker. And so it, it is really... Um, that's where you see people looking at antiques. And... Um, you know, the, the, you, you see old furniture, um, how, how it actually ages then. It's a, a fascinating material. And I think that is, that is something, you know, it does really sort of develop an interest then in, in that material. In, I think it becomes a whole, it becomes a lifestyle. And so, for instance, you know, we've, we've got a tree planting project, things like that as well. So I think that really... It does, it does start off as a, as a whole interest for you, which, which can be fantastic. Now, as we've been talking about some of the other things with the wood, I've started a little carving here. And this is a bit of a, a sort of improvised carving, so you sort of see uh, where, where we go for it. But it's, it's sort of following on. Last, last week's live stream, we were focusing on, um, we were focusing on the, the carving of a rose. But I was, I was using a, a rose template. That's me dropping a spoon, excuse that. Um, yeah, so it's just to show you that what we were doing last week, really useful, especially for anybody learning about wood carving, that is having a template where you either use carbon paper to draw your design on the wood, or you do a paper drawing and you stick it on. So it's a really useful method that can help you if you're learning wood carving. But this is another way, some people are comfortable to do it sort of freehand, and it's just to demonstrate how you can actually do a carving like this um, freehand. So that's, that's what we're demonstrating here now, just to finish off. And this one, I got, I got quite high hopes for this, that this is gonna, um, when we put some shellac on there, we will have a rose that has got sort of, um, well, it's going to have two colours in it. So I think this could be nice, quite a nice little... Have you explained thing. what wood you're working on? Yeah, I have mentioned it a couple of times. It's a piece of you. Yeah, um, and the interesting thing there... Yeah. Explain why you've got the two colours. <laughs> yeah, this, you see the, the sort of character in the wood where you get the heartwoods. So the heartwood is this orange streak down the middle. And then you also get the sapwood. So you get the contrast. You get the contrast in, in the two parts of the woods. Uh, there we are. Now, what do you reckon? Should I do one over the top as well or leave it as... I think we'll do one uh, more over the top. I personally would leave it, but there we are. Well, we, we'll probably go and spoil it now, but we'll give it a go. This is where you, you know, you sort of... Um, there's, there's some, I mean, that's the thing, when we're carving, you know, it, it may look sometimes as if we're working to a plan, but um, more often than not, we're not. You just sort of, you, 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 let, the, you let the carving take you uh, where you want. There we are, you'll have, to, you'll have to put a comment in the comment section below. Was it a good idea to do the, um, who was right, the, uh, the father or the son? Who got it right? Should I have put the, the petal at the top or not? Put it in the comment section below. Yeah, we'll well, get, we get it, a consensus it would have been of opinion. such a dainty little flower, and now it's become. No, you're not. Uh, you're not supposed to try and influence opinions. Yeah, it's become like a, a, a an open sort of floribunda type rose. There we are. Now, all we're going to do, we're going to use. See, I'm not going to try and influence people. I'm just going to go on to the next part of the of the carving. But um, but the father's more competitive than the son. <laughs> right, what we're going to do, um, we're just going to go all around the outside, so we're going to get some depth to the carving now. So the first thing, I'm using those stock cuts on the outside, and again, what we do quite often when we're doing different carvings, as you've seen, we use the scroll saw, and what the scroll saw, that does that job for us, because it gives us a sort of cutout around the outside, and it gives you that light and shade so it gives you that contrast of light and shade where you actually cut out um, the individual carving. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all of the bottom and then I'm going to work, I'm going to work into the edges here. 
And it's great for us doing the live streams because we've done a lot of demonstrations of different carvings, but all, always here at our family workshop, we've always been doing um, live carving demonstrations. That's always been like our uh, bread and butter. So since lockdown, we're not able to do um, that so much. You might hear the, the chainsaws just started up again. So excuse if that is in the background. Um, so no, yeah, we've lost, we've lost the, um, the, the background. Uh, so we've, we've lost the opportunity to do that as much as we, we're used to. Um, so being able to do live streams on you, YouTube like this and demonstrate to people how we carve different things has been a real, it's been a real privilege. And oh, the other word you haven't mentioned this morning, Dave, is therapy. It's yeah. so therapeutic. You've got, you know, you think how many things you've covered. You, you've got the wood, the material, the actual, you know, you're looking at this tree. It's you. Yeah. I think there's about 15 species of you in this country. And, you know, you can start looking around. It often goes near churchyards, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so you start to think. So your mind starts to think about the wood, where it came from, how it's dried, the colour. You've got knots in there, for instance. And there's always... Nice thing with it, there's always, not always, but often there is a story to, to, to the woods, to, to what we're carving, and that's fantastic. And what we do on a, on a, uh, in our sort of working life is a real privilege because we're often involved in, in recording um, events, occasions, all sorts of different things. So, yeah. Well, it's we been interesting around. this year how many people have requested spoons for weddings and and we we're, we're having them return to things like that because the wedding date has changed and yeah. things like that so again it's it's another um it's a, it's another sort of and we've got the one we're always the, recording points in time but that is something you know that we will remember how many love spoons that we've had to change dates and, and people are using the situation as part of the story of their spoon because they they sort of the, the one lady's requested us to to actually write COVID on there because I all the plans I won't show have changed. The front did, but I'd show the back yeah. with the date there nine so. five twenty. So that was well, all of course, planned. They couldn't get married on that particular date, and now we have to carve the date on that heart. But it's it's now become part of the story of you know not that it's it's become part of the story of that occasion for them. And um, yeah, so they want that recorded on there for how this year, the circumstances, how it's shaped then their plans. And I know everybody, it's shaped our plans and uh, what we've been able to do and not do this year. But as I said, it's been fantastic for us to be able to, um, for, for us to be able to, to do live streams through YouTube to share the process of carving and hopefully it'll encourage that's what we're trying to do is to encourage others to have a go and we're trying as well to sort of share how much we do enjoy doing what we do it's a real privilege to be involved in making love spoons i, I think wood as a material is, is sort of undervalued it's not really appreciated then i mean uh... and again we, we another thing on that subject that dad's saying about the, the value of it um, we always emphasise, see, because we, we recycle, we reclaim a lot of the wood that we use, and then we, um, we, we've started our tree planting project, and that is something that we're really passionate about, because as, as I said, you can hear the change from the background, that is essential work that needs to be done out there, because those trees, they're all dying, and, um, you know, if they come down, they're going to be damaging buildings and property and stuff like that so that is essential work that has to be done but we've seen what's happening and we have planted replacements already they, they've been they've been put in place there and so hopefully the trees then that are being lost hopefully we're well on the way to replacing a lot of a lot of those those trees and we planted oak trees uh, silver birch I'm thinking, is it? Uh, I get always get this one wrong. Is it hornbeam or ho yeah, hornbeam? Yeah, hornbeam. We planted things like. Um, I think uh, is there a walnut tree you put in there? We put a couple of walnut trees in. We've and got, my favourite is holly. And there's this. Yeah, we planted a lot of holly. 
is the sticky ash. Another day, we'll demonstrate the carving with the holly. That's a lovely timber. Um, and it's ideal for Christmas gifts. Um, you know, we, we make Yeah, those. now closer to Christmas, on that subject, we're going to do some live stream on the different things that we do. Um, and we're also, we're going to do our 12 days of Christmas. Um, I know it's a bit early yet for us to be talking on Christmas, but... Um, well, we've already been having requests for Christmas. Yeah, stuff. we've been having requests for it. So we will be doing a bit more on that. As we mentioned a couple of times, I'll mention it again, our documentary, that's coming up soon. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned, that'll be, that'll be coming up, showing how we, how we make, how we, well, basically showing the stories of our family collection. Now then, I, I, I actually got one thing. Yeah, I, I'm fairly happy with that. The only thing I would say, I, I think, I think, to be honest with you, I want another petal. I want another petal this side to balance it out. So I'm being a bit, I'm being a bit fussy now, but I just think a petal on this side over here, for me, my eye is just going that way slightly. So I just think if I put another petal, I'll probably put it in now and think I wish I hadn't done that, but there we are. Um, I just want something out this way because for me it just looks as if it needs a little bit more over here just to balance it out but that's the beauty of doing hand carving you know you, you're going to have opinions you're going to have thoughts and ideas so yeah we'll check that one out see if that's I think with a rose you can keep going and going, really. But uh, there's a song coming on. You there might. is a rose in Spanish Harlem. Oh, there we yeah. are. So that's two songs. That's a bonus song from from Thomas the Woodcarver today. There we are. We just finish off the top of this one. I'm ready with a shellac. And this is the interesting thing when you do a carbon like this, you, you, you always, you're looking at it and thinking, oh, I think I just put a little bit more here, a little bit more, but you can keep on and on. So there we are. I'm, I'm happy. All set for the shellac? I, I think we put a coat of shellac on there. Right. Well, well, hopefully it'll highlight it now when we put this on. Yeah, I think the one area that I could possibly have done another petal is just down in this corner here. Yeah. But the nice thing with nature is that, you know, nature, natural things like that, they, they are different. You know, no, no two flowers are, are identical and things like that. And that's, that's the beauty of it. I, I possibly, as I said, but that's being really fussy now, yeah. um, you know, to I could have come just in and around there a bit more. But you're always looking at it and thinking, could we do that? Now, hopefully there are, are some simple ideas. Um, what do you think? Should I do one more spoon? I think we do one more spoon. Um, Shall I do one then? There we are. I'll, okay. I'll leave it. Dad, Dad will come in now. He'll demonstrate. Um, and maybe you can explain. Because this is the nice thing with wood carving. We've all got our own ideas. We've got our own thoughts. We've got our own experiences. Um, yeah, so Dad's going to choose. He's going to choose to carve a spoon. What yeah. are you going to well, choose? What's, well, what's happened here? Dave has chosen all the easy wood to carve. And now I've been left with the more difficult one, which is the usual case. So I've got this piece of oak, and um, what shall I carve we'll in just, there? We'll then, just pull Dave? it up in the in the vice a little bit further. There. There we are. Put then. it there. So we've got it nicely. Um, I'll check it on the on the screen. Okay. Yeah, we've got okay. that. I think in right. the centre of the screen. Well, perhaps I put my daffodil on there. Yeah. Yeah, this will be good because. Um, as I said a few times, I actually prefer the daffodil that Dad does. So, again, you can put it, you can put it in the comments section below when he's when he's finished, which which one you prefer. Because I yeah I like the way he does it. So if you want to explain, now that, well I, I tell you what you carve and I'll explain. You can see straight away he's carving that differently to myself because he starts by doing the middle of the trumpet, as I start doing the front of the trumpet. Good example, two different carvers, two different methods. Yeah, I'm on the wrong side of the bench, Div, so I can't find the chisels. You're, so, which one are you looking for? I'm, I'm looking for the one that goes round there, like that, you know, with round a bit of sellotape on the bottom. 
Oh, See, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is lack of, uh, oh, there we it's are. either lack there of organisation or, or lack of eyesight, because it was straight in front of him, so I've helped him out there. There you go. So that's the front now of the trumpet. So you can see a slightly different method to what I've done, because as I said, I, I start at the front and work back. He started at the middle and then worked <coughs> forwards and for the and more backwards. For the more mature person who, who hasn't got maybe the strength to... Um, sort of do the way you carve you you sort of like so whereas i'm using a mallet so you can use the mallet okay it's just a little bit easier a little bit easier there so well, that's, that's interesting because i i do use the, the mallet on the front of that one but you can see that on the front of the trunk if i just point in there you carry on don't worry i'll stay out of your way there's um he's just taken out a little bit of detail which I which I don't I don't do. So again, it's just little subtle differences that can make two people's techniques differently, and also um, make your style unique and different. Again, I would do a little cut around the back, as Dad has, has gone in the middle, and then two petals at the back, as I would do one. This is actually great for me because. Um, I, I love learning new techniques and new methods, and I've always said that I prefer the daffodil that Dad does. So I'm thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna nick his technique. So, so we got four petals then. Now so you got four petals. I only do three. Four. I know. So I, that's what you have. So I press down there a little bit, and of course. Are you gonna do your stem? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But you mustn't rush it. You've got to take your time. Take your time. You mustn't rush it. Hook it out a little bit. A little so bit. So you're using time. those stop cuts. Just cutting into the edge. But you can see Dad's carving is, I would call it, it's a little bit more subtle. Because with mine, I tend to put a little bit more depth on it. But again, it's two different styles. Well, I know I'm carving towards myself a little bit there. Just but say, it, say it, would be, it would be either that or turn it I think, around I think in, in the is, vice. I think this is it, the, the part in the manual where it says... We do do as we say, not as we do, because we always advise to carve away from yourself, especially right. if you're learning. Never so carve there. towards yourself there. and keep both hands <coughs> on the blade and cut we're away okay from yourself. There. So what we're we looking for. Where's that chisel gone with the cellar? Well this this is the one. There we've we got a little one there. So it's interesting that Dad's choosing this to, to, to carve with most of the gouges he's picking up are ones that have um, seen better days where they've yeah. got a bit of tape this gouge actually interestingly is beyond its working life in many ways the, the gouge um but we can't find a replacement for it we've tried right. all sorts of different ones it is such a nice gouge that we've never been able to replace it properly so we're still using it yeah. you see just cutting into the edge like so there little bits of detail Oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the bench again, but never mind. You tell me what you're looking yeah, for and we're I'll okay, find it. we're okay, yeah. Now you can see, now I left the front of the trumpet, I left it flat. As you can see, Dad has shaped it, which gives you a little bit more of that three-dimensional feel to it. And now this is the big difference here. You see, I, I go in there and I scoop that out there like so. And I scoop that, which is something Dave doesn't do. No, I don't. He doesn't do that, you see. So... Uh, Back down there. Oh, yeah. I've got to be uh, yeah, careful. You've got it right there in the center of the ice, you can see. Right it. in the center. Brilliant. It's almost there. Um, it's, it's very interesting actually when you start doing this. Pop that back in um, there. It's, it's starting to, it's starting to make me feel, it's getting me thinking about things like um, like chefs and things like that because you'll have two chefs will do a, a recipe and things like that. And where, they, where have you hidden that chill again? They'll, there do it it completely, is. they'll do it completely differently. Yeah. And it gives you that sort of feel. So you can see going back over there we go. just the front of the trumpet. Oops, a daisy. We've got gouges flying everywhere now. Gouges flying everywhere. Gouges to the right of me. Gouges to the left of me. There you'll we go. Watch, you'll have to watch this, this foot as well. because Okay, there we are. We've got a foot very close to the tripod. That's what we're a bit concerned of. But, um, it won't be the first time I've dropped the chisel and cut my toe. No. I had a coach full of people here when I remember in my... He dropped it in his foot. And my blue sock turned... Uh, it turned red. Red, yeah. Not the that's, best. That's 
almost there now. Now this is an interesting bit here because what I want Dave is a nice curly large chisel. Where right. which one can you which one um, can you find for I, me? I would you reckon that one will do it or is that too big? I would have liked more of a curly one, but uh, on, is that will that do it? Ah, that's the boy. Thank you for that. There we go. And now we put a nice stem on there. And there we go. That's the stem there. <coughs> so we got a nice. As mentioned, it's a little piece of oak, which is yeah. we we always think that oak and the daffodil goes together well because people refer to it as golden oak. Yeah. So you've got that golden colour. So I'll put that back down there, and now we can choose. We just got to do old, this my old favourite. I want um, finishing details. Which one are you looking for? Uh, the one with the sellotape on? That one there, because right. we have a few little details there. Oh, this is interesting as well, because um, it's, you can see, I, I reckon you've taken about three times as long as me to carve it. <laughs> so it, you know, which, and there's no, not the one that is, is right or wrong or better or worse and things like this, but it, it's just interesting that the same carving the one that Dad has done has got a lot more detail. Um, and the bit they haven't got on there at the moment You're is about to move the tripod as well. Am I? All oh, right. I'm getting excited, see. So I'm, I'm coming towards the... So you um, can see, he's, uh, he's added grass and, and I told you he was more competitive. <coughs> I, I didn't have any um, grass or anything. Which one are you looking for now? He keeps moving the chisels. There we are. I got it. That's it. A little bit more down there. He's blaming me and it's him putting them back. That's it there. What do we call this little bit in the middle now, which um, which I'll need that chisel for? That bit there, Dave. What's well, that, I call what's it, that bit? Oh, the, well, that's like the inside, isn't it, of the, of the trumpet? That's yeah. the... Now, sometimes this, this, you'll split this sometimes, and then you'll have to go over it deeper again, but... Uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. That, that can, the back of that, well, it is, because there's not a lot of wood behind it. There's not the support of the, from the fibres of the wood. And sometimes, yeah, it can it can pop out on you. And there we are. And let's be honest about this now, though, Dave. I mean, the main difference now between your I put your daffodil. Where's your daffodil? I got mine. Oh, oh, there we are. Are you not going to put? You're not going to put a couple of lines? Yeah. On oh, yeah. We haven't finished and yet I, because I'm waiting for him to <laughs> black it as well. The proof of the pudding really is in the eating, of course. That's right. And you do remember that day, Dave, when I carved this daffodil, um, middle of the, well, middle of the summertime. And a bee actually came in and landed on my daffodil. Yeah, you know? know. So you know that's and, the and proof of the pudding. And sadly, that, that that's the story he's told many a time. So um, and incredibly, many a time people have believed him. We've we've amazingly had a number of people have been really that that happened. That's that's amazing. So yes, one of his favourite stories. Almost there. Almost there. We're almost there. A little bit more there. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the... Um, You're going to get that bee again, are you? No, I'm not going to go and get the bee. Um, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the shellac. So we're going to get a little bit of shellac. Okay. And you can put a coat S of shellac street, on there. Street chisel there. This one here. Yeah, that'll do me. Dave wants these little lines to be shown in there. Just a little bit of detail on the, on the petals. There he goes. There we go. Turn him round. I got one on the bottom. Just like so. A little bit there. Get that bit out. Uh, I think I definitely won in terms of who can carve a daffodil the quickest. Is that a, is that a bee I can hear, Dave? I, I hope so, otherwise there's some terrible feedback on the microphone. Okay. Right. You, you, you can... You Here can, we are. You want me to shellac as well? Yeah, come oh, on. Oh, look at this put brush some, he's giving me. There, put some actually. shellac on there. Just so everyone can see how that comes up. And this is a nice part now when you see those, those colours coming out. There we are. So we've got, a, we've got two daffodils. We take that one out of the way. Put them side by side. And then don't forget, put in the comment section 
Which is your favourite? Let us know your thoughts. This is this is number one. This is number two. But bear so in mind as well, when, when, when you do have your feedback, bear in mind that the number one took took a quarter of the time to carve the, the number two. Yeah, so I tell you... Get it in the comments section. Tell us which is your favourite. Yeah, I tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going I'm to finish this properly now. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's, uh, it's, it's a sad... Well, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get all in shot. Um, yeah, all of the um, all of the carvings. I tell you what, if we can just sit back two seconds and I'm just going to refocus. Yeah, there we are. Look at that now. Um, there we are. Right, so... I can, what move, I'm gonna I can do, move now, can I? Yeah, I'm going to try and get in shot all of the let's have a little look can we can we get them all in we got one two let's move the chisels out of the way yeah hopefully we can get in shot all of the i dropped them on the floor there there we are so yeah through that live stream um are we missing one are we missing one no i think that's everything that we carved that's that's what we've just demonstrated carving and basically what we're doing here now is we're sharing this is this is our our day job then that's that's what we do uh, for you know as as a living then we 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 do carvings and this would very much be our sort of um, bread and butter not so much since lockdown because we're not having the, the number of people in the workshop that that we're used to having but it's hopefully a useful guide and a useful idea for how you can get started with wood carving, how you can enjoy carving all sorts of simple motifs and flowers and all sorts of, I've dropped another one on the floor, all sorts of different spoons, how you can use the love spoon as a, as a great method for learning wood carving. And, and they become heirlooms, they do. They, they, people yeah. keep these years and years. Yeah. Um, and, and the wood changes, the character, they're polished, they're and looked after. Yeah, and that's why we sort of describe the love spoon then. It's, <coughs> it's very much, it's a, I would say, it's a tradition for the ages. It, yeah. it does stand yeah. the, the test yeah. of time. Yeah. But it's great fun, and it, it is a great way of learning wood carving. And so therapeutic. It and really it is. is. It's something that you can, yeah. you can really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. There we are. Thank you again for watching. Um, as I said, we've got some more live streams. Some of the ideas we got with live streams, we're going to do some bespoke love spoon carving in, in a live stream. Do you want to pass me over that one there? Um, Which one do you want? The, that one there. So you can see, yeah, we're going to do a bespoke spoon. This is a bespoke spoon that we're working on at, at the moment. But that's one live stream that we're going to have coming up. We're also going to do um, a, a live stream where we look at... Um, where we look at, oh, I'm just seeing there's a, there's a comment on it, um, where we look at how to design a spoon. So we'll get that, we'll get that in. And if you've got any symbols or anything you would like to design, let us know and we can include that in, in that demonstration. But again, thank you all for watching. Um, get it in the comments section below. Which is your favourite daffodil? Yeah, which is the favourite daffodil? Is it the son or the father? Yeah. But bear in mind, the son only took a couple of minutes to do his as, as I, half I, of the live I, I, stream. I, I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna cheat, like, you know, but, you know. And that's chestnut and that's, that's out. But yeah. get it in, give us your thoughts. Yeah, and we'll be uh, back again soon. Thank you all.